At the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference, I'm joined by Keith Schaefer, editor of the Oil and Gas Investment Bulletin. So Keith, talk to us about how Trump's presidency will affect us in Canada, especially with, for example, the border tax that's coming in. Well, really, Mr. Trump has two very strong ideas that he wants to do that would affect Canada, but they're coming at it from opposite ways. He, he wants less foreign oil, and I really, by that he means OPEC oil, not Canadian oil. But then he's also, on the other hand, saying, okay, we're going to have this border tax potentially that really could impact Canadian prices because we're already the cheapest oil in the world because we only have one market, the United States. Right. And now that market is saying, well, we're going to actually charge you to bring oil in into our country. And that could lower the price of Canadian oil by, you know, five, ten bucks a barrel, which might not sound like a lot, but no. on, a, on a cash flow basis, that's more like 10, 20, 30 percent. So, that, so that's a big deal. So one positive thing that could happen out of this, Rachel, is that, you know, mainstream Canada really gets how important it is for Canada to have more than one customer for its right. oil and get more pipelines to the coast. So that could be one of the unintended consequences of these of this policy that's going to come into effect this year that really would be good for Canada. And what else are you writing about um, in the New York Bulletin uh, besides this that we just talked about? Well, I, I think the big thing, you know, it's January and everyone wants to know what, what's going to happen this year. Everyone's right, kind of, outlook. everyone's looking at, at the outlook. And I think the big theme for 2017 is going to be don't have any big ideas okay. because the reality is that we just don't know anything right now. The, 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 the oil market is just so cloudy and opaque right now. Are the OPEC cuts going to hold? How fast is U.S. shale going to ramp up again? It's, it's really difficult. They're trying to create a, a much more managed market around oil like we used to have. Um, so it, it's going to be an interesting year and I don't think anybody really knows with any certainty what's going to happen. So I, I just tell people, be flexible. Right. Uh, if you see a stock you like, by all means buy it, but just keep an eye on what's happening because right now nobody knows where the price of oil is going to be six months from now. I mean, amongst all this uncertainty, what is your strategy for investing right now? Well, as always, uh, we, we try and stick with the lowest cost producers as possible. Uh, last year we were all in the States. All of our investments were down in the United States in the, in the Permian Basin of Texas when oil was really cheap. Uh, but now, with oil back up above 50, all of a sudden, a lot of these Canadian companies are now profitable again for the first time in quite a while. So we're moving our attention a little farther north, okay. back up to Canada, uh, trying to look at uh, some of the you know, more profitable plays. Uh, I, I would say that I'm probably less bullish on natural gas than a lot of people. A lot of people are seeing a, a, a much tighter market developing this year. But there's one big formation in the United States, in Pennsylvania, called the Marcellus. Okay. And it is just massive. It, it has gone from like 2 billion cubic feet a day to 20 billion cubic feet a day in the last few years. And it is still rocking. Okay. And there's like another 8 billion cubic feet a day of pipe coming out of that. 8 billion? 8 billion cubic oh feet a day of pipe coming out of that formation this year. So I'm, I'm thinking that's going to keep quite a lid on, on gas prices. Gas should not be a disaster, like it has been for the last five years, but I, I don't see it being a rocket ship either. And I think a lot of people are really counting on gas to do wonderful things that, this year. I, I don't see that happening. Right, and both short-term and long-term, what is your advice for an investor who wants to get into oil and gas? Well, I, I think there's two things you want to think about. One is that you don't need to be a genius to do this. You, you, the, the, the one word I tell people you want to focus on is payout. Okay. Don't worry about how, how profitable they are. Or, you, know, you, you want to how if you want to distill all the economics of oil and gas into one word, it's payout. How fast does that company's wells pay out? Uh -huh. If they cost five million dollars, can they get that five million? How long does it take to get five million dollars back? Right. And, the, and, and the magic number is twelve months. You want you want to see one year pay out on these wells. That's when, when you can find a company that has that, you're laughing. Uh, and so you don't care how rich or cheap the stock is, if they've got good wells, you buy the stock. Now, I know that you have an event coming up uh, this year. Can we talk about that? Twice a year we hold uh, a conference called the Subscriber Summit. This year in Toronto, it's the day before PDAC on Saturday, March 4th. And we've got uh, seven energy companies and seven mining companies presenting. Uh, every year we have uh, guest speakers in that are usually either sell side analysts or hedge fund managers uh, uh, or we've, we've had uh, the head of investment banking for different firms out so um, 
it, it's a great day. It's one day. Uh, the companies only get 10 minutes on stage, so it's kind of like speed dating. You get to hear what they what they're all about, and then you get to meet them after the show. A lot of one on one time. Very cool. Now, lastly, I'm curious to know how you got into the industry. What made you get interested in oil and gas? Uh, <laughs> desperation and boredom. Oh, boredom. Uh, <laughs> I, I had been working the mining game for a long time, and uh, after the crash in 08, I kind of realized that that game wasn't coming back near as strong. And really, there was nobody else, and, and, and there still isn't anybody else in Canada writing strictly about oil and gas. Right. So I knew the newsletter game and how that worked, and I knew enough about uh, markets, the stock market, that I could translate that because you know mining is all about reserves and production. Oil and gas is all about reserves and production. So it was it was, it was a fairly seamless transition. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing today. God bless. Uh, for more at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference and also from uh, Keith Schaefer, uh, be sure to check out the information on smallcappower.com.